Hi everyone, something a little bit different today. If you're a fan of Paul McCartney, I think you're really going to enjoy this. I've been speaking to a chap called Tom Jennings. Now, he has recently bought the Wings Over Europe bus, that bus that Paul McCartney and Wings toured Europe in in 1972 in their very first overseas tour after the university tour. That bus fell into disrepair. It was, it was abandoned for decades in Tenerife of all places. Tom has bought it, he's restored it back to its original 1972 glory and he's got a heck of a story to tell, that bus is going to be going out on the road, it's going to be available for people to see at exhibitions. And there's, there's some great things that he told me about, uh, for example, I didn't realise that there was any sort of connection between the 1972 Wings Over Europe bus and the 1970 England World Cup squad. What could that connection be? Find out here. Tom. Thank you very much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Rushed off my feet. Have feet have hardly touched the ground since this wonderful past weekend, the, re the launch of the bus at the Classic Motor Show at the NEC. Brilliant. Well, it's excellent work that you're doing. I've been following it for, seems like a few years now. Um, I'm guessing it must be at least two or three years that I've been following this story. But could you, Tom, could you just, for the people watching, could you just explain for anybody who's not quite sure... Tell us why this bus is special to Paul McCartney fans. Well, if I start by telling you how I came to buy it, um, okay. then uh, it, it'll kind of uh, get us there. Sure. Um, in, in October 2019, I was on holiday with a bit of time on my hands and so went online looking for a Garth Brooks guitar and yeah. ended up buying Paul McCartney's bus. It happens to us all. How on earth did that come about? <laughs> and no alcohol involved, I promise you. None. Uh, it wasn't one of those sort of midnight, you know, bear, bear, we do a bit on eBay kind of thing. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah. But <clears throat> I love Garth Brooks and especially the songs of Tomorrow Never Comes, The Dance, and of course, Friends in Low Places. Um, I wanted a guitar, maybe even a Takamini GB7C that Garth had actually played. So registered with a few websites and they started sending me stuff. Hmm. Lots of stuff arrived in that was of no interest. But one day, a message arrived in that just stopped me in my tracks. Okay. Paul McCartney's 1972 Wings Tour Bus was coming up for auction. Wow. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. I got this rush of colour and music, and the memories just flooded back. Yeah, yeah. I saw this double-decker bus in all its colourful glory with Paul, Linda, the children, Heather, Mary, and Stella McCartney, the band, Denny Lane, Denny Sywell and Henry McCullough, the wives and girlfriends, all enjoying this beautiful open top deck, yep. the fresh air, the sunshine, as they rode along to a fab Beatles McCartney soundtrack. That's what I got in my yep. mind. Brilliant. I was 11 in 1962 when the Beatles exploded and loved the music. Uh -huh. So I was 21 when... Paul's Wings Over Europe tour happened, and it didn't cross my mind to buy this bus, only just to check into the auction in a couple <laughs> of weeks to see what it went for. Yeah. Fast forward two weeks, crossed my mind, I checked in and was astonished. Not one bid. Wow. The bus was in a bad way, yep. but surely someone could see past that and see what a treasure it was. So I checked further. And when I read the description, it didn't do justice to the bus at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to buy, do up and sell motors. So know how okay. to put together an advert. And my head just wouldn't leave this description alone. I was really outraged. This bus <laughs> should have a provenance like any treasure. I had the laptop with me. So I started tapping out what should be said about this bus. Yeah, I'd leave it and go back to it and read it out loud and then leave it, go back to it, read it out loud. And did that on and off for about three days until I was happy with what I'd written. Hmm. When I read it out loud to my great friend, Steve Travis of the Miami show band, he said, Tom, I think you've succeeded in selling it to yourself. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, the bus was mine. Wow. And as for the Garth Brooks guitar, well, that may have to wait a while. I hope Garth understands. And if Garth is watching, thank you, Garth, for bringing me Paul's bus. <laughs> Brilliant. So this this wasn't your plan 
several years to do that. It's just kind of fallen, well, I say fallen in your lap with an awful lot of hard work by the sounds of it. Uh, so it happens, it happens a day at a time. Yeah, I can imagine. It does. Would you like to know the provenance that I put together after those three days, which have basically kind of lived with me ever since? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's hear what you what what you're thinking. Yeah, here was here was the thing. I I knew the story inside out because mm-hmm. I was a mad Beatles fan, and everybody in the whole world, it seemed, was watching. What would John, Paul, George, and Ringo going to do next yeah. after the the breakup would they as the song said get back would they get back together john went off and had his adventures with yoko Mm -hmm. paul went quiet so everybody's right paul's got to be cooking something he's got to be up to something he's there's got to be something in the wind and then all of a sudden this gorgeous bus appeared um so here's what i wrote okay in the summer of 72 the summer of wings paul mccartney chose wno481 as the 1972 Wings tour bus and took it rocking and rolling across Europe after the glory days of the Beatles. With its very own rock superstar on board, this amazing family and band adventure was hotly pursued by the world's media for over 7,500 miles across 25 cities and nine countries, becoming a legend of rock and road and landing the title, the most famous bus in the world. Now, for all the when I when I started talking to the museums about this, um, I, I came up with another another one and 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 said this international treasure on wheels is firmly parked at the intersection of timeless chart topping music, time capsule art, and classically beautiful automotive design heritage. And I I sold it to myself. And I thought, I can't let this bus die because surely it looked as though if somebody didn't buy it, it was surely going to end up, you know, as it had escaped a few mm-hmm. times in the past. It, yeah. it had escaped from the scrapyard Absolutely. only to go on to greater glory. Yeah, sure. Because it was it was in Tenerife, wasn't it? I'd, I'd seen pictures when it was still in Tenerife uh, of there, there was a website. I don't know whether it's your website or not. That was like a, a history of this bus WNO481 and it kind of ended with the at that point it ended with the sad fact that it was in an abandoned piece of land in Tenerife with sort of trees growing around it possibly in it I don't know and it just yeah it looked like you know if anybody was good to, going to do anything with it they were going to take it to a scrapyard yes that's it that was the, that was always the danger and one of my predecessors Roger White bless him um the bus was only saved by the destination blind. And it, it was in when Tri Central were, were uh, disposing of all their buses they're, they're, they're for the new fleet coming in. Mm. Um, there was a big long line of them, and it was in the line and it was painted gold. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and, and all the all, the, all the local bus and coach companies came along to see if they could grab a bargain. Yeah. And Roger, and, and the thing was that they said, any of them that don't get sold today, would be scrapped. Right. And so Roger went up and down the line and he saw, and all the destination blinds, you know, they said St. Albans and, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, places in Hertfordshire and all, all around. Uh-huh. And, but this, this one said Oslo. Right. And he said, what's with the Oslo? And they said, Oh, that was the destination blind from when it did the tour with Paul McCartney. And he went, what? <laughs> so that saved it. And uh, Justin saved it later by bringing it back yeah. to the UK, um, hoping to find a buyer. Um, and you know, he was he he was great because he he was very insistent. He knew what he had, he knew what a treasure it was, yeah. and he was determined to get the right circumstances for the bus. And I had to reassure him that I was actually going to restore it. And that yeah. I wasn't just going to put all the bits on eBay and hope to make a profit. Sure. Yeah. Well, you've certainly done that and and more. Um, it's I find this bus kind of fascinating because obviously in in the the early seventies, I think it was probably already about twenty years old at that point. It had done its service as a bus. It didn't start off as a an open top bus, did it? It was a a bus with a roof which was converted to open top. I think was it that during the nineteen sixties. That's right. In yeah. 65, it was converted to an open topper for service for the holiday makers going in and out of yeah. uh, Butlins at Clacton. Yeah. 
Great. Um, and then after Paul McCartney owned it, the all the wings uh, livery is that the correct term? I'm, right. I'm not a bus. I'm not a bus expert, but the, right. the the painting I had to learn um, to... that was all painted over, wasn't it? And and kind it of was, was yeah. repainted later on. When was it? Was it used? Not not Hard Rock Cafe, but that kind of a thing. It was. That's why it went to Tenerife, wasn't it? Well, when um, when it finished um, the the tour with with Paul, then seats were installed back in. Um, I, do you do you know the story of the, of the seats? Um, the, not not in so, depth about the seats now. The, sorry, well you'll enjoy this one. The <laughs> the um, in the, the same company Halls Coaches Valiant, who, uh, who 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 did the bus for Paul. Yeah, they also owned the 1970 England World Cup team coach. All right, okay, for Mexico, and it was driven by a man called Arthur Newell. Now right. Arthur had a very colourful career during the war fascinating man a brilliant and a brilliant story yeah um which his son den told me the whole story and actually wrote the whole story out for us and it was yeah. it's beautiful and den came to see us at the nec at the weekend great, great blow yeah and um so his his father drove the england world cup team coach of 1970 <laughs> the that, that was the that was the time that the fans were banging drums and making noises outside okay. the england hotel to keep yeah. them awake so that they would be all tired the following yeah. day for the match. Okay, yeah. And the fans <laughs> and the Mexican authorities, apparently, now I don't know this for sure, but the Mexican authorities didn't want a British coach because they wanted to show off their Mexican coaches. Right. So they didn't want the coach there. But the fans, the opposing fans, they wrecked the coach. They actually wrecked it. Hmm. So they brought this coach back yeah. to England and they put it in the yard. Hmm. Enter the bus that was going to go with Paul McCartney, and Paul wanted very comfortable, lovely seats. Yeah. And it looks like they took the seats out of the England World Cup team coach wow. and put them into Paul's bus for the tour. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That is, that's a, I, I love trivia like that. That is fantastic. I'll give you a great story. Tom Salter, who who did the bus uh, for Paul, yeah. um, was Mr. Carnaby Street, and he owned the Gear Boutique in Carnaby Street. Yeah, and it and and he decorated the inside of the bus uh, with his Carnaby Street crew, and they contributed loads and loads to the bus. So Tom did a video. And Tom actually joined us at the NEC at the weekend, and he was great. He was so yeah. much fun, and he adored it. He said, I wish I'd had you in 1972. He said, goodness <laughs> me, the job you've done, it's beautiful. Yeah. So to get the thumbs up from Tom Salter is marvellous. So he said um, he, 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 he said that um, on a video that I got with, uh, just around about the time I bought the bus, that there were aircraft seats. So I thought, where do you find 1970 – aircraft seats that were available in 1972 yeah so facebook thank you i got on facebook 80 museums i thought well it could be a 50s aircraft that came from 60s aircraft that came from so i messaged 80 emailed messaged facebooked mm -hmm. 80 aviation museums all around the world including the the aviation museum of zimbabwe the Aviation right. Museum of Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. I, d I did everybody I could find. Yeah. And then somebody turned around and said, Tom, sorry to tell you, mate, these are coach seats. They're not aircraft seats. Oh, dear. And that was <laughs> that was one that I thought, I am never going to find these seats. Yeah. Never, ever, ever. But um, I well, once I knew there were coach seats, excuse me, I then got onto all the coach forums on Facebook, and a few weeks later, found out what they were. They were called E-type lozenge seats. Hmm. And and this bus lands on its feet like a cat. Yeah. And we needed the seats. And would you believe that William Staniforth, who was one of the bus's guardian angels, he had a pallet of them in his warehouse. Wow. E-type <laughs> lozenge seats. And he donated them to the bus. Really? Not only did yeah. not only did he donate them to the bus. He drove them 200 miles from Gloucester to Clacton. 
yeah. to deliver them personally to the bus. Fantastic. Now there's so, a lovely man. That's amazing. You, you've had you've had some luck on your side, uh, and I'm sure you've had plenty of luck against you as well on this journey. But uh, that's great to hear little things like that. That's yeah. I guess it just makes it a lot more authentic, doesn't it? Being able to do that kind of thing. Well, the other wonderful thing that happened about the seats was that the fabric that covered the seats was made in 1950, or made in the 70s, I beg your pardon, yeah. for the, the likes of the England World Cup team coach hmm. um, by a company called Holdsworth. They were taken over by a company called Chimera Fabrics. So I sent them photos of the England World Cup team coach, which right. you can find online. Yeah, And Den, Den actually gave me his father's photographs of the England World Cup team coach being lifted by crane onto the ship. And, uh, what, and that's a wonderful story, which we'll talk about another time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, so I went everywhere trying to find this fabric, trying to find this fabric. And then I went, Holdsworth no longer in uh, operation, but they were taken over by a company called Chimera Fabrics. Yeah. And the wonderful, lovely marketing director, but the sales lady there, Rachel Preston, she was fabulous. She said, mm. we don't do this, Tom. We don't do this anymore. This is one of the really old, old, old patterns. And yeah. this would require uh, a complete new setup. Mm. And, and the, 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 uh, the order would be about £10,000 right. for the, the thing. But you'd have about 400 yards of it. I said, 400 metres. I said, I need about 25 metres yeah. for these seats. So she said, let me see what I can do. And the lovely, she took it to the marketing director, Nigel Watkins. Yeah. And he said, for Paul McCartney's bus, we're going to do a special run. <laughs> wow. For your seats. Fantastic. And, and that was remarkable. That was one of the most golden days ever. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. You got a, you got, uh, you got a Paul McCartney fan there excited for uh, totally. Totally. what you were doing. Um, fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, now, I saw, I think it must have been about five years ago now that um, the official Paul McCartney Twitter account started asked a question didn't they they said uh, we understand that the bus is back in the uk has anybody got any any knowledge of it of what's happening with it so it was great to see that they're taking an interest in it so have you had any kind of sort of personal contact with paul mccartney or do, have they got any plans to be involved in in what you're doing in any way well um they had they um how can i put this when i first bought the bus one of the first things i did was to, because I, I knew about that. I knew about the Twitter. Yeah. Um, and so I, I wrote, uh, I sent a message uh, to to Paul's office. Uh, and I said, hi, my name's Tom. I've just bought the 1972 Wings Tour Bus. <laughs> and here's my mission statement. So I did a presentation right. telling about myself, about my history, how I yeah. grew up with motors and music. And I'm going to restore this bus. Yeah, and that was ver and that was version one, and I've every time I've changed that, I've sent them a new bulletin. Yeah, um, and I'm now on version twenty nine. Right. Yeah. As it keeps changing, and and there are more changes to actually go into it after this weekend. Uh -huh. But uh, we but we've we've had um, I haven't had one single bit of negative feedback. No. Um, they've always been supportive, but of course. There are 300,000, apparently, there are 300,000 pieces of Beatles and McCartney memorabilia out there. So imagine, for yeah. Paul to show preference for one piece of memorabilia yeah. would probably not be fair. No, no, fair. I, I imagine he's probably kept a bit of an eye on what you're doing and uh, he's probably got a smile on his face when he thinks about it. Because that must I have like happy, happy memories for him. The kid's been really young, not been married to Linda for too long. First first tour for Wings, apart from that little university tour beforehand. So that's got to be a happy time for him. I'm, I'm sure he's delighted with what you're doing. And I bet he knows probably more than you think about about what you've been doing. Well, I hope so. And uh, every time I send them uh, a message, I always... Uh, I hope it meets with your approval. That's it. Yeah. That I hope that what we've done is accurate and affectionate. Yeah. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure he's happy with it. I, I understand that you've got um, a, a trunk from Denny Sywell that uh, he's donated to you that's on the Denny, bus. Can you, can you tell us about that and what, what's, was there anything in it when he gave it to you? 
what it's a, there was a letter of authenticity yeah from from Denny and I said to him um when he announced that he wanted to don make a donation to the bus yeah um I said well Denny actually do you know no worries about funds you know I'm thinking he's going to donate some money or whatever mm. and he said no 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 he said um I want to donate I've kept it for 50 years. <laughs> I want to donate to you, to the bus, the trunk that Paul McCartney gave me right. to use on the bus on the tour. And so this said, is like that, his, his and his family suitcase, essentially, was it? He said, if that trunk could talk, <laughs> he said, the, the, the stories it could tell. Yeah. And he sent a really beautiful um Letter of Authenticity, which I can let you have, of course. It's on, And it was on public display at the NEC. I put it on a, a, a frame and it mm. was sitting there, pride of place, on his trunk. And I said, Denny, could you do us a favour before you send it? Could you autograph in big black marker? <laughs> could you please autograph it? And he and he did a great big flourish. Denny Sywell wings on Fantastic. the front on the front edge. And so really? he, all the services he's autographed. Excellent. Because I think Denny looks back really fondly on it. I know he, he, does. he seems to he, does. Uh, he seems to really enjoy the the time that he had with Wings. Um he loved it. Yeah, brilliant. So so what are your plans for this bus? Now that I think the work's nearly finished, isn't it? I saw something the other day that said that you're not far off being able to get your MOT. Uh, but what what do you actually plan to do with this bus now that the work's almost done, I guess? Well, um, we've got there. There are a few jobs left to do, uh, which is which is great. And the uh, the storage, um, the 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 storage shed where the bus is going to live, uh, in in great care and great mm. security. Mm. Um, that that will be ready uh, just after Christmas. So as soon at the start of the new year, she'll be moving out of the workshop, yeah. where she's been since July twenty one. Right. And out of the loving arms of Brad and and the amazing team, yeah. and it'll be going off to uh, to its uh, storage shed. Um, uh -huh. but, but we're gonna we're gonna have fun. Um, we've just unveiled its newly restored look at the Classic Motor Show at the NEC in the Federation Village. The Federation being the Federation of British Historic Vehicle Clubs, who mm. have been just amazing. There are invitations to bring the bus to many events and to bring the bus to the city of Bristol towns and counties of its history. Yeah. I got in contact with uh, the councillors in yeah. Essex, in, in Suffolk, in Norfolk, where the bus used to travel, okay. and Bristol, where it was born, Lowestoft, where, where the body was manufactured, where it was made. Yeah. And, and that, that's a lovely subject as well. That's a really brilliant thought because the, that was before all the motorways, and the bus yeah. was manufactured in Bristol. And... It was 1953, so the war wasn't long over. So all the RAF guys that were demobbed, a lot of them took up jobs driving these naked buses without bodies. Mm. Literally, instead of a driver's seat, there was a wooden box. <laughs> and they used to sit on it with okay. their flying helmet, their yeah. leather flying helmet, their leather flying jacket, and their goggles driving these huge chassis, rolling chassis, yeah up from Bristol to Lowestoft to have the body put on. So I love the picture <laughs> of the of the RAF pilot piloting our bus from Bristol to Lowestoft yeah. with the bugs in his teeth from flying along at 38 miles an hour. That's really? all it would do back then. Yeah. And and that's a lovely story. So th there are many, many museums that, that want to see the bus. Yeah. Um, uh, we have loads of invitations. I mean, loads. Uh, the Transport Museum Withall want us to uh, bring the bus up there for the, the big Bristol festival that they've got, uh -huh. uh, celebrating Bristol buses. Uh, they, have a, they have a few, uh, so there's going to be a huge get-together. Um, Fantastic. I guess, um, I guess apart from its Paul McCartney history, the fact that this is a roughly a 70-year-old bus, there can't be that many of those still around. So even if people aren't interested in the McCartney element, if people are interested in old vehicles of that time, it's probably got a lot of um, interest for, on, on that side of things as well. Well, before before finally committing to buy this 1953 Bristol bus, I went online to find Bristol restoration and preservation groups. 
And there were some really lively ones. And one mm. name seemed to be cropping up everywhere. And that was uh, William Staniforth. Mm. So I got his number and I rang him and I said, hi, William. Uh, my name is Tom. And I think I'm about to buy a 1953 Bristol KS Duck, which was the start of the word, of the letter W. When he yeah. jumped in and said, would that be the McCartney bus? <laughs> Fantastic. Because I know where all the others are and none of them are for sale. Yeah. And that one is missing from the set. Right. And I replied, I said, yes, uh, it is, William. He enthused. Oh, he said, buy it. <laughs> and, and I said, well, well, hang on a minute now. I don't know anyone in the bus restoration world. And he just jumped in again, yeah. both feet. So David Hoare, Chepstow Classic Buses, just across the Severn Bridge from where your bus was born in Bristol. Fantastic. So he said, there you go. So I said, thank you, William. Off I went. I called David. And he reminded me of my dad, D David did. I yeah. mean, straight talking, no nonsense, very straightforward. And that gave me the confidence to seal the deal and buy the bus. Sure. Brilliant. Well, you've had a, it sounds like you've had a, a fantastic team working on it. So I, I, I'm certainly, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a chance to come and see this bus. Um, I hope it'll come up north, but if it doesn't, I, I want to arrange a, a weekend away or something and tie it in with where the bus is going to be. And I imagine quite a lot of people are going to do the same thing because uh, it's a fantastic piece of history is this. And it's, I think not only have you been lucky to get the bus, I think the bus has been very lucky to get you from the sound oh, of it and, and the passion that you've put into it. Thank you. Um, it's just just fantastic to keep this going on because I'm sure it's something that, as 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 Paul McCartney fans, we think, oh yeah, that's that's something that happened fifty years ago, and and kind of we could have just forgotten about it. But the fact that you're going to let it give it the chance to live on for who knows, hopefully a few more decades at least, it's it's fantastic. Um, it's one of those sort of really exciting periods in Paul McCartney's early solo career. I think uh, it's almost it was, like a bit of a mythical status. I think as that as it, that that first European tour. You're absolutely right because. It, uh, it was pivotal. Yeah. Um, Paul had had a year of literally downtime mm. and he was so, uh, he wasn't sure about whether the fans would take him without yeah. John George and Ringo. Yeah. And that's why the university tour was important mm. because that was his first dip of the toe back into the water. Yeah. And he just rocked up at universities uh, unannounced and asked them if he could play. Yeah. Um, and once once he'd got his, you know, toes in the water again, mm -hmm. then came a properly structured tour. Sure. And, but he was still Paul McCartney, former Beatle. Of course. And he, yeah, he stepped, forevermore. But he's, but he stepped onto that bus as Paul McCartney, former Beatle. Yeah. And he stepped off the bus, Paul McCartney and Wings. Yeah, and it's amazing and that, that journey that they went over on over a sort of a three or four year period of just like you say universities, and then suddenly four years later, wings over America, and they're the just about the biggest stadium band in the world. Um, it's, it's a fantastic period that I I love reading about and listening to everything from it. Um, and and uh, yeah, this is, a, this, yeah, this is, this and is a fantastic Sywell, part of that. Denny Sywell even said it. He said this tour on this bus. He said, was so important. He says, yeah. because by the time we got off this bus and finished that tour, he said, we were a real band. He said, and yeah. we were ready to rock the UK and then the USA. Absolutely. And we were we were ready. We were red yeah. hot. Yeah. And that was and that was fabulous. So I love to th I love to think of uh, of of all the things that happened on the bus. Um, for example, they gave Paul a copy of the book Live and Let Die. Mm. And they asked him to write the song. Yeah. And so for seven weeks of that tour and 7,500 miles of that tour, um, Paul was sitting on that bus. Now, I'm a songwriter and I've I've had a little modicum of, of success, minuscule in comparison with Paul yeah. McCartney, of course. <laughs> and that's that's the, that's the thing for 99.9% for .9 of songwriters. Of course. I know what it's like to write a song, and I know I know the atmosphere is is at its most wonderful when you're driving along. Yeah, you've got that music coming from the diesel engine or the the end the music coming from the engine. You've got the rhythm of the road. Mm. You've got the freedom of being away from 
the, all the all the life distractions that that come that take you away from all that. Yeah. So, eight weeks after getting off the bus, Paul went into Abbey Road Studio and he recorded the Red Rose Speedway album, including yeah. the classic song "My Love." Yeah. But he also recorded "Live and Let Die," uh-huh. first James Bond theme song yeah. to be nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. So. With Roger Moore as James Bond, it mm. doesn't get any better than that. And if 1972 Wings Tour Bus provided any inspiration yeah, for maybe it Paul did. Yeah. in the writing of Live and Let Die, yeah. all I can say is we are very proud to have been of secret service. No, oh, very good, yes. And of course, Live and Let Die features a double-decker bus on a chase as well, doesn't it? It does. Uh, as I remember rightly, yes. And um, so, yeah. Well, you never know. They might revisit <laughs> that now that the bus has la- the bus has landed. Yeah. Um, which somebody said the other day, and somebody also said the magical history tour. That's yeah. what they called our yeah. weekend at the NEC. Yeah. Fantastic. What a fabulous thing to say. Yeah. There were so many great things that were said. Yeah. Um, you know, so the bus has landed. The 1972 Wings Tour has landed. That's a great one. So Excellent. what brought the bus to to Clacton, um, I was working hard on Facebook and got up to about a thousand followers. Well, one day I got a message that read, When am I going to work on my bus again? Mm. And the message was from a man called Steve Broughton, who told me that he looked after the body and paint of the bus for 10 years. Yeah. From 1982, when it went into the Sotheby's auctions, oh, in, yeah. until it went into the Sotheby's auctions in 93 and was sold and taken down to Tenerife. Yeah. So I was looking at the time for another restorer mm-hmm. as, as I was moving out of Devon. Um, and the timing seemed good. So I asked him where he lived. And he said, Clacton. I said, well, that's amazing. The bus used to be a Clacton bus. He said, right. I know. <laughs> I, I said, where's your workshop? He said, I haven't got a workshop. Yeah. I went, oh bit of a kink in the garden hose there. So I need to find, I wanted him. I love the story of of uh, of this. And so I went online, got out the yellow pages, started ringing around. And literally everybody, as soon as I told them what I wanted, that I had a double-decker bus that needed restoring and it needed to be done to a, to a nice high standard, mm-hmm. uh, they all pointed me, literally almost every single one without exception, pointed me at Brad Earl's workshop. Yeah. And so I looked at the website, loved the website. Um, so I prepared an email, you know, telling about the history of the bus. And this is what I want. So yeah. here's the history. This is what I want. And yeah. I sent that off like half eight one morning and um, not expecting, you know, expecting to, to hear from him in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. The phone rang half an hour later. And this boy said, hello, is that Tom? I said, yeah. He said, hello, it's Brad. And I thought I'd start start with an obvious grin. I said, oh, hello, Brad. I said, I've just sent you an email. <laughs> and he said, I know. He says, I'm, that's why I'm ringing you. So, okay. So we started with a laugh. And he said, I have to do this bus. So yeah. I said, why do, you have, why do you have to do this bus, Brad? He said, because my mum is the world's biggest Beatles Paul McCartney fan. <laughs> he had me at mum. Yeah. Brilliant. So we talked and we talked and we talked. And he was just great. I yeah. liked him straight away. So I said, all right, uh, thank you, Brad. I'll get back to you. So I ran, So I got a hold of Steve. I said, Steve, I asked Brad if Steve, if he would mind Steve coming and working on the bus, if, if I was to bring the bus to Clacton. And uh, I loved it going back to one of its hometowns. That was, that was really amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said, you know, would you mind if Steve? He said, no, absolutely not. If he's a good body man and all the rest of it, and, and this history, you, you never know. We might learn something off him, yeah. that, you know, about the bus that we don't know. Yeah. So that was great. So got a hold of Steve. I said, Steve, go down and check out this workshop. And he came back to me later on that day and he went, wow. He said, it's a really great workshop. And it's only 10 minutes down the road from my house. Mm. And I was going to say, well, how come you didn't know about it? But anyway, there you go. Tom, this this has been absolutely fascinating. Uh, there's some of the things that you've told me have been, um, well, certainly not what, I, what, not what I was expecting to hear. For example, the the 1970 England World Cup team, I did not know had any involvement in this story at all. So that was fascinating. Um, 
I want. I don't like to speak on behalf of other people, but I think I can speak on behalf of a, an, a lot of Paul McCartney fans here by saying thank you and congratulations uh, to to you, to the team, because th- there's all sorts of people that you've talked about on, uh, on on this call and probably various other people as well who just sound like everybody's done a fantastic job. So on behalf of on behalf of Paul McCartney fans, thank you for that because uh, it, it's great to have this little bit of history kept alive. You're at the top of your game, and I love your insightful comments. I love your insightful questions. You're coming from a place of deep knowledge, and that's a that's lovely. That's that's great to get. And for somebody coming from where you are to appreciate what we've done, that's excellent. That's really brilliant, and and that is a is a huge pat on the back for us, which I appreciate Great. and which I will accept on behalf of all the boys. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So it's been a pleasure talking to you, Tom. Um, I you. hope we get a chance to speak again sometime. Uh, yeah. I look forward to hoping, hopefully meeting you at some, some point where the bus is on display. That would be well, fantastic. That, that um, would be great. You'll get uh, the VIP <laughs> grand tour. Thank you very and much. If you bring your, and if you bring your guitar, you can sing on the McCartney stage. I'm there. Absolutely. I'm there. Thank you so much, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I Thank hope, you, I think Andrew. everybody, I think everybody who um, enjoys this period of Paul McCartney's history will, uh, will, will enjoy the story that you've had to tell. So I, I wish you well, I wish you well, I wish you well and health and thank you very much. I want everyone to get bus happy. Take Cheers, care. Tom. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So I hope you enjoyed that chat with Tom. I know I certainly did. Uh, Please check out Tom's website on the links that I've put at various points throughout this video. And if you are interested in Paul McCartney's wings, then please have a look at this video uh, where I checked out some details that you might not have heard before about the Wings University Tour. Thank you very much. I'll see you again soon. Bye.